my brother-in-law Sean Olves of the Eiffels was able to talk to Lowell over Zoom video. Lowell tells us all about growing up in Calgary and how she got into music. She also tells us that she moved to Toronto at 18 to attend the University of Toronto to pursue songwriting. She soon dropped out of college, becoming a stripper while she found her footing as a songwriter. During that time, she began writing some song demos on a ukulele, which drew the attention of a Canadian music manager. Lul has written songs for JoJo, Demi Lovato, Madison Beer, and many, many, many more. So check out her latest release, Lemonade, and check out the video version of the interview with my brother-in-law and Lul on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, at Bringing It Backwards, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Bringing Back Pod. We'd appreciate your support if you follow and subscribe to our podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. We're bringing it backwards with Lowell. Lowell, thanks for joining us today. Hi. Excited to hear your story. Um, Been listening to your music. It's very cool. Um, Thank you. Do you remember the first time you you felt like you might want to do music for a living? Uh. I don't think I really remember. Like, I, I think it was probably when I was five or something. I yeah. used to hum songs or make up songs to myself when I was walking, I think. I don't know. Yeah, you used to, you were writing music already in your head? Just funny I songs? I think so. Although I think maybe I was just like singing songs I already knew or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I still do that, but I was like, I wrote this. <laughs> That's funny. It reminds me of a, there was an episode of The Simpsons, an old episode where Homer was saying, writing music's easy. I'm Watch, I can make one up right now. And he goes, do, 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 <laughs> Marge is like, that's just Mary had a little lamb. And then he changes the do's to d's. And yeah, it's, a, it's a funny I, part. I mean, that's not far off and <laughs> yeah. from a normal writing session. So was there a reason you think that you started getting into music? Were your parents into music? Did you, did they put you in lessons or anything like that? Uh, actually, neither of my parents are musicians, but I think I had a uh, perfect pitch and mm. we figured that out really early on. Like I think by the time I was four or something. So my mm. parents figured they should probably put me into piano or something like that. So mm. uh, yeah, I started piano really young and kept at it um until i was like 15 or something i mean lessons that's such a cool skill and for the more casual listener um perfect pitch is when you can basically identify a note just by hearing it um so how did they know that you had that ability i honestly don't know i i guess it's like i'm not sure if it's like obvious like somebody I could like pick up a song on the piano or something that I heard like when I was really young and like I would press the right note right away or something like that. Ah, so you were able to play songs by ear pretty quickly. Yeah. And I ah. actually like kept doing that for a long time. I would um, learn my classical pieces by ear instead of reading the notes, which really frustrated my teacher, I think. <laughs> I think you're, you're practicing. I think you're just learning it. Hey, you get getting the job done one way or another. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and, I tried to tell her that, but <laughs> <laughs> so you start playing piano because your parents uh recognize this talent you have, uh this mm-hmm. natural ability. Um and where do things go from there? Yeah, I don't know. I think that like through my teenage years I was dealing with all the things that you feel when you're a teenager and mm-hmm. so I started writing songs more seriously to cope. And I um, had a friend who died in high school and that was really hard for me. And so I wrote a lot of music um, to deal with that. And kind of now it's still all the same music as my therapy, so. Yeah. So in high school, were you were, were you getting pretty serious about your songwriting? Were you um, already thinking, hey, I want to put this out at some point? Uh, I don't, I don't. I... I wasn't sure really what I wanted to do, but I knew it was like something music based, but I, I actually started doing, I, when I went to university, I took classical music. So I wasn't sure I wanted to get into like pop or um, indie pop or whatever I do now. But, um, and I, I thought about like, I'm a creative writer as well. And um, I kind of wanted to like write musical theater or like, I don't know, I wasn't sure, but I just knew I wanted it to be music, so. So you were, you go to college and uh, you, you're studying classical music, you said? Yeah, I was doing uh, 
piano and opera of all things and I hated it so I dropped out very quickly um what did you hate about it because obviously you must have been interested in it to pursue it um I mean I like I don't hate opera it was just a really intense program and um yeah I don't want to like smack it was it's like a bit pretentious for my personality mm. I'm very right. like I'm usually late for things and like <laughs> that's right. my vibe so it, wasn't, it didn't really suit my personality right um very but it was formal. helpful yeah it helped with my range I can sing really high now so yeah I bet I don't, I don't know if this is true but I heard the 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 lead singer of Muse um used to sing opera or something like that and that's why he's got such an operatic voice which it's a cool story like it's true a very believable yeah. story <laughs> So you kind of you kind of feel like you want to do something a little less formal. So what do you do after you decide that you don't want to study opera anymore? Yeah, I just I I was living in Toronto, so I'd been doing like open mics, and um, a lot of people had approached me and been like, "I really think you should do this for a career." And um, a couple, actually, a friend of mine from my university, uh, he would perform with me, and we did like um it's gonna sound funny but like we would like improvise write songs in front of people <laughs> mm. and he's actually a really successful writer now too he's um Majid from Majid Jordan but so he wrote hold on we're going home ah. uh but we wow. yeah we would like sit he probably was gonna ha would hate me for saying this but we would like sit in this um in this cafe at an open mic and and rap battle on the spot singing <laughs> songs <laughs> yeah and write songs in front of people. So would people give you topics or something like that? Or would you find yeah, things sometimes. to talk about in the bar or whatever, wherever it was? Yeah, and we would start with like a pop song. Like it, we'd start with like apple butter, cheese, and like make it songy and then just go from there. And then we'd like pick out people in the crowd and be like, you with the shirt and blah, blah, <laughs> That but sounds fun like, and and uh, impressive, you know, to, to have to be brave enough to to have to come up with something on the spot uh yeah you could you could call it impressive it was probably actually not good but <laughs> we're gonna call it impressive it's like karaoke for songwriters almost <laughs> yeah a little bit it's definitely it's like i feel like freestyling is a muscle i i used to do it a lot and i probably need to like get back into it because now it gets so like, into my head you know yeah yeah no i agree I, I think the more you do it the the better you get and you, you remember the words that rhyme a little bit better, you know? Totally. If, if and also, you don't second guess yourself. It comes faster, I feel like. Right, right. There's so, no like, is this good? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, uh, quick, you have one millisecond to think of a rhyme. It's good enough. Diz, did, I mean, obviously, he had some skills. So he went on to write uh, The Weekends. Uh, just hold on. I'm coming Drake. home. Drake. Oh, Drake, Drake. Drake. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. a little early, um, but uh, that's, yeah, that's a huge, <laughs> that's no small hit. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so after that, you know, you, you're having some fun doing, uh, you kind of get out of the more formal music and start kind of having fun doing some, some more casual pop oriented stuff. Um, how do you go from uh, kind of doing fun freestyles and, and, and on the spot songwriting to, um, to making kind of a, I don't want to jump into the music you're making just yet because unless if there's something in between but uh, what happened after that it's definitely an in between like i've had a pretty long like long up and down kind of path uh compared to some of my peers i think especially mm -hmm. like considering that i'm still relatively young but um yeah i, I kind of worked some shady jobs like saved up i really wanted to uh record an album and I start, I like learned how to record my own music. And so I made this kind of really quaint indie album. Um, and actually funny enough in, in Canada, we have this program where you can like take a, uh, get a free ride across Canada on the train. Um, and I really wanted to go home. I was like all the way across on the other side of Canada, but the only way that you could, uh, you can get a free ride if you perform but you can't uh plug an instrument in and my main instrument at the time was piano and so i had to learn like an acoustic instrument and i didn't play guitar so i learned how to play ukulele ah. um and so i made like all these kind of weird ukulele pop songs and um randomly the guy who had like recorded 
Jason Mraz, I'm yours, and like, hey, Soul Sista, um, he came across the demos that I made and he was like, I love these ukulele pop songs. Ukulele pop is what I do. Do you want to come to London and like work on ukulele pop songs with me and write for other people and stuff? So he flew me to London. Um, that was like within a year and a half of when I dropped out of school. So it was like pretty smooth sailing from there. That's that's interesting. You know, I've heard. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've heard ukulele songs and I've heard ukulele used in pop songs, uh, but I did not know that uh, ukulele pop was something that I didn't know that was like uh, a term, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was just like a thing that was happening at the time. I don't like do it anymore. And I think like mm -hmm. at the, I very quickly decided it was like not what I wanted to do, but it was like an interesting niche that I got into um, by learning that instrument. Yeah. So, so, so you connect with this, uh, producer and uh and and how did uh you know what came out of that did you did you actually put down an album uh with, with those songs that you guys compiled yeah, so I, I think i kind of decided i didn't want to do a ukulele pop album <laughs> mm -hmm. um i wanted to do something like a bit more indie artsy kind of thing so we did uh an album together but it was like more i think like bjork influence kind of thing and i did mm -hmm. a lot of like art exhibits and stuff like that around Scandinavia mm -hmm. and pursued this album um and then yeah a Canadian label like my favorite label in Canada um signed me and I I went back to Canada after wow. that so how did it, how did they hear it? they did you just put it out and the, the right person heard it or uh, you know how did you guys get connected um I had some of my music playing on BBC uh, just like some of the indie EP stuff that I put out um, independently and the Guardian picked it up as like a you know good EP to listen to or whatever like once nice. to watch or something and I think that um, that was like a flag for some labels back home in Canada yeah um, and in America but I yeah it was my home so so it sounds like you were already getting some traction even before um, connecting with them. Um, was was that a another turning point once uh, once you connected with your label and um, were, were they able to take you maybe even a little further than you were? Yeah, I mean, I, I released an album with that label and um, it was like pretty critically acclaimed. It didn't like, it wasn't huge or anything, but a lot of people said it was good and then um yeah I think that I realized like at that time that I I really wanted to write music for other people and I was like I started developing this other artist in Canada and that was going really well so I pursued that a bit and then um now like a couple of years have passed and here I am yeah was that was that first album the one that you have out right now um on on streaming services we loved her dearly was, is, yeah. was that the album so, yeah, so that one did uh, did pretty well, and then uh, and then a few years later, you you dropped Lone Wolf. Um, so between those those two albums, were you just writing a lot, or what were you up to in in those uh, in those few years between albums? Yeah. So by the time I was making that second album, I was definitely like more doing a lot of pop writing for other people, and like um, writing a lot of stuff with this girl Bulo, who was doing really well in Canada. Yeah. And um, I kind of dropped Lone Wolf just like I needed to release a record and I had some songs on there kind of thing. I wasn't like super passionate about it, but I, I do like some of the music on there. But um, I kind of I dropped it and then like moved to L.A. and was like, I'm a pop writer now. <laughs> <laughs> what what made you want to come to L.A.? I mean, you're um, obviously you were you're writing. So I, I was it was it for the network that's out here so you can, you know, connect with other people to collaborate with? Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like to be a songwriter right now, you have to be in L.A. or in Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, and I probably specialize in like, I don't know, I'm not like super country, not that you have to be country to be in Nashville, but like that style of writing isn't really my style, although like, right. I would like to go to Nashville at some point, but LA felt like the, the place. And um, I was getting like a little bit of, people were calling because of Bulo. Um, 
doing relatively well in the US as well. And so I figured I would like use that wind. But yeah, the network out there is definitely like undeniable. Oh yeah, I mean, when you say uh, relatively well, hey, <laughs> for those listening, um, Lowell's <laughs> cat just uh, jumped in front of the webcam. <laughs> yes. um, when you say relatively well, that uh, uh, Bulo song went, uh, or, or album went double platinum, right? Yeah, it did. It did really well. She won a lot of um, Junos, which is a Canadian um version of the Grammys and uh -huh. um, signed to Republic and um, has a great fan base. So I'm that's that must have been awesome to uh, to be part of a, a project that won, you know, Canadian Grammys, basically. Yeah, no, and I'm Ulo is so talented, too. I mean, it's I'm always chasing like the next person that's as talented as Bula. She's just amazing. And um, it's it's fun to be part of a project from so early on. You know, when I met her, she was 15 and still in school and she wow. was coming up on her spring break and we were writing EPs together. And yeah, we still write together almost every day now, so. That's cool. And, and you also were part of uh, something that went gold, Selfish by Madison Beer, right? Yeah. Um, she, I think after Bulo, she was like my next big project that I was really focusing on. I like to like do one thing at a time. So, yeah. So you're, you're writing with people, you dropped a couple albums um, and uh, you've started dropping um, singles again this year. Uh, your, your newest single is, uh, is Lemonade, which I think uh, I, was, I was listening to. It has a really cool vibe. Um, I, you know, I, I think the, the, uh, theme of the song is pretty obvious but uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that song yeah I'm, so I wrote that song in LA while I was doing like you know sessions every day with different writers and um I was just like in a creative wind and uh usually I was writing like in the morning before I would go to my session so I did that mm. one you know probably from like 10 to 11 or something mm. on my way to another session uh, you wrote it. You wrote it in an hour, huh? <laughs> I, just, I wrote that song so fast. on the way on the way to someplace else. Okay. Yeah, and it's funny because I like I really I'm pretty meticulous when it comes to writing, and I obsess over like lyrics, and I'm I'm just a super perfectionist. I can be a bit annoying to work with in that way, and it's just like it's kind of frustrating how quickly I wrote that song, and it's probably one of my favorites. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like it came really fast. Um, yeah, I've talked about that often. I think that those, a lot of times those are the best ones because they feel the most effortless. And uh, when it works, it works. And that's probably why you didn't have to be so meticulous about it. But um, but yeah, you know, I've uh, <laughs> I I remember in high school I uh, I had written um, a song and it was so and I had worked really hard on it and I uh, showed it to to my then band and they were like, yeah, that's all right. And I was like, well. And I was like, here's some riff that I like just made up in a couple minutes. And they're like, oh, that one, that, that one's cool. You know, it's just like. Yeah, there's definitely something to be said for like spontaneity or like a moment captured in time. And I feel like that's what music is. It's supposed to be like emotions captured. And I think sometimes when you talk about that emotion for too long, you can tire it out. And like, I feel like the listeners do feel that as well. And right. it's like something, I mean, I'm still learning every day as a writer, but. And I go through phases, like phases where I'm like, no, you need to spend three weeks on a song or the other ones where I'm like, no, if you do it in 20 minutes, that will be the best. But right now I do, I feel like there's something to be said for like these really not overthought songs that, you know, something like a Bene or like that Backyard Boy that's doing really well right now. Um, just the way that those are just, they kind of feel like they're freestyled. Um, you know, back to the beginning of my story, but it's um, that like youthful feeling of just like raw emotion, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Um, I love Ben A's stuff. It, it does feel very, very casual and just fun and light. Um, so yeah. And it's so smart. It's, it's just, it's just not overthought. Right. Right. Totally. And yeah, I, I hear these stories of the Beatles, 
you know, when they were just getting started and they'd be kind of uh, forced into the studio and just be like, you have to write like three songs today or something like that. And when I hear stories like that, it just kind of, it reminds me how simple, you know, writing can be. Um, but uh, of course they had a great producer and everything. So that's, that's a part of it, you know? Um, but uh, I, I try to remind myself of that. So, so Lemonade, you wrote it in LA um, on the way to, uh, on, in between um, errands, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what was the inspiration for it? Um, I mean, a lot of things like emotionally, I was, it's, sometimes it's hard for me being in LA like I'm definitely an east coast person and mm -hmm. um I love my home Toronto and um I think that you know I wasn't exactly feeling like optimistic on that day or whatever and I, I think I was you know getting a pep talk from my boyfriend and he's like yeah everything can be okay and I think I was just like how like how can you say that like we're gonna mm -hmm. have to be long distance forever <laughs> right right feeling very dramatic uh -huh. um as songwriters are and so i think that was the main inspiration funny enough also like the concept just like the word lemonade and then making that into a song i had actually tried like making this a pop very very poppy pitch uh song for um you know some other artists and it was terrible like it was just like such a bad song i can't remember mm -hmm. like i think i was like reffing like all day but i was like well, <laughs> nice and uh i went home and i was like well that was bad but i think the concept's cool and then um the next day i made the, the better lemonade and so lemonade we're basically talking about making um lemonade out of lemons right that's that's kind of yeah. the, that's kind of the <laughs> metaphor yeah right so uh so all right so your, your boyfriend gave you some uh he was he was reminding you that uh, you can make lemonade out of lemons and uh, yeah. a little bit of that inspiration there. I mean, it's also like it's a commentary on like um, I've thrown this around a lot, but the um, toxic positivity, but just like sometimes you just want to feel really not good about things. Uh -huh. um, and everyone's like, no, smile, you'll be fine. You're uh -huh. doing great. And you're like, just let me have my moment, please. <laughs> right, I want right. to relish in my agony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you got to go low, get back up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you've had a amazing career so far, you know, writing um, double platinum and gold records for other artists. And, and you know, <laughs> I, you've you've had, you know, immense success as well. You know, I'm, I was listening to you on Spotify earlier and, you know, you got millions of streams on, on a lot of your songs here. Um, so what's what's next after Lemonade? Do you have a few more singles? Are you coming out with an EP or an album? Yeah, I'm really excited. I mean, I'm, after spending, you know, the last couple of years writing for other people, I've managed to scrounge up some of my own thoughts just for me. So I have basically an album's worth of just like my own things. They're mostly not co-written, which is weird because mostly I do co-write with other people, but um and yeah it's some of my favorite stuff that i've ever done so i'm really excited to put it out in the world and have people here kind of where i'm at now you know yeah when uh do you have a rough uh release date for any of that yeah i mean my plan is just to keep releasing singles like once every couple months or or whatnot just like keep them coming out and then you know probably an album by the summer or something like that nice okay any other any other singles this year yeah i have one coming out in december nice when we're feeling really cold and sad yeah do how do you feel because i feel like i hear about this a lot in the music industry that you know the holidays can be an awkward time to, to release music um because you're kind of competing with christmas music or travel time uh are you thinking like early December or, or, or does that not really come into your considerations? Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's a good point. I, I think that this is going to be a weird Christmas for yeah. everyone uh -huh. um, because of COVID. And I think that like this song is like, it's pretty, a pretty emotional ballad. I think that it'll 
I mean, it really makes me feel something. So like, I think that it'll make other people feel something and hopefully it'll like suppress, uh, provide some support for people that are not able to do their usual holiday things. But yeah, I'm definitely trying to like make sure people don't think it's a Christmas song or anything. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, it, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Lowell. Um, if you had one piece of advice to give to aspiring artists, what would it be? Uh, definitely just keep going. Like, you know, I, my story is, I, I think, insane, but it's just a bunch of ups and downs. And, you know, if you're not, yeah, I don't know. Just don't give up. <laughs> just keep going. Right. Persistence. Keep mm -hmm. Keep doing it. I really think if you just keep doing it, you'll get there. You'll get good enough. Um, people will gain respect for you eventually. <laughs>